So this part starts on the last day of the quad deck install. You can find that earlier video here. While the guys were finishing up, I got started on marking the path of the Radiant Pex tubes. I'd actually wanted to put it under the rebar to keep it safer. I think it would have been easier also, but the guys didn't want to worry about damaging the pecs while they were laying rebar. Anyway, with the rebar down first, we used wire ties to attach the pecs. My runs were carefully planned for zone control and heat distribution, and also had to be balanced at about 300 feet long each. They ended up going down through the floor and into the mechanical room. This was also the time to get the ENT, or smurf tube, wiring conduit into the floor. This is mostly for lighting recessed into the ceiling. I also finished up some of the ventilation ducting. When the crew had bent down that perimeter rebar, they had not been very careful to bend it down properly. As a result, much of it was much too close to the surface. Keep in mind that the concrete will only be 4 inches thick over the quad deck, which means the concrete would not even cover this pex tube. So I spent some time wrangling the rebar in the rain. In some places I had to undo it completely in order to bend it down properly. On this day the Scots arrived to check out the place, and while the kids were playing Chris helped me put in the mudroom radiant. Same plan as before except we could use the stapler so it was much faster and there was no bending over. It was time to hook up a second manifold for the radiant heat. These walls will eventually be plastered, but for now I just put in temporary boards to hold the manifolds. The hookup is pretty easy and then I pressurized the system. The following weekend my friends wanted me to go camping, but I was stuck working on the perimeter of the quad deck. So they made a deal to come help me on Friday night and into Saturday morning, tripling my speed. If I'd quit by Saturday noon and go camping through Sunday. Pretty good friends and a pretty good deal for me. As for the work, we were basically building a little perimeter wall to keep the concrete where it was supposed to be. We started with putting in stakes, then we put in the perimeter board, roughly the right height, and then we raised the board to the exact right height and screwed it into the stakes to keep it in place. We continued Saturday morning starting with laying the welded wire reinforcement. And then we got to the perimeter on the north side which was a bit tricky because it was so far above grade. And then we went camping. I had the plumbers come out to roughen the bathroom on the quad deck. They cut into the quad deck to lay the drain pipe and then they used sand to slope it properly. I should note that I had tried to get them out before the rebar and pecs were down, but they had to cancel that appointment, so instead I ran around trying to pull stuff out of the way on the day they did come. Some of these other pipes are for the bathroom sink, uh, the back wall faucet, the downstairs sink, etc. Basically anything that needed to go through the quad deck. After they left, I got back to putting the rebar and pecs down again. By the time I was done, it looked like carefully orchestrated chaos, but we passed our inspection. I also needed to reinforce this north perimeter. I ended up bringing in dirt with the skid steer to pile up against it. I'm not shown. I also had to put a couple columns together, starting with the rebar skeletons, which Sherry tied together while I built boxes to form around the rebar. The little triangle piece at the bottom is to resist lateral forces on the column before the adjacent walls go in. While the plumbers were on site, I had talked to them about better ways to connect pecs, and I ended up buying my own crimping tool and replacing my shark bite connectors. I also used my hole saw to put in some extra pipes so it would be easy to run future electrical, etc. I also ran some extra smurf tube. A lot of sand had got onto the quad deck and I didn't want it under the concrete so I had to clean it off. I especially wanted a good connection with the top of the basement walls and this area had collected the most sand. I used a combination of my air compressor and my shop vac to clean this all up. Sealing up the column boxes. These styrofoam blocks fit into the 4 inch pipes I'd installed earlier. They'll be cut out later to form the 3 by 10 inch ventilation registers. Okay. 
and then some final cleanup and prep for pour day. Pour day arrived and we were there before sunrise. David helped me out with some last minute tasks and then he passed out, fast asleep in the truck before the concrete even got pouring. And I couldn't wake him up. The guys nervously started the concrete pour with the, glue, with the grooves, which they vibrated. And then they came back over and added a 4 inch slab and screeded it all off. Here's a quick look at the power screeder. The column forms were not strong enough and they blew out. The guys from Dicer Concrete were great and helped pull everything back together very quickly. Sometime later they went back out and troweled off the floor. several passes. After all was said and done, we checked the basement and no concrete had pushed through, just a little bit of bleed water under the quad deck seams. A few days later we went back out to remove the forms. My sister-in-law Mary brought her three kids to play. I think the kids had a great time. The forms came off easily and some of the wood will be reused, but most will be taken down in the pile and left by the fire. Here we're pulling back all the dirt I'd piled up against the high side of the perimeter. We scrapped about half the wood and left it by the fire pit also. Winter was coming and we wanted to clear off the footing before the dirt froze. I also did some laser measurements, especially of those shifted columns. I'll have to trim those later. After giving the concrete a few weeks to cure, some other friends came out on a Saturday to help me remove the bracing, which we didn't film. After the bracing was taken out, the shoring was still stuck to the roof because it was screwed in place. We took out the screws along each beam and carefully lowered them and took them out of the basement. Many hands made the work easy. I don't recommend building your own house without friends. Now that the deck is done, I can continue to focus on the precast concrete ribs.